he tui whakai rō he mana tangata. The idea of being indigenous is a concept I think we have within our own lands, but it's not until you become a part of a larger group of indigenous people uh, who are creative that you really see your indigenousness from a different perspective and that there is a real collective subconscious within the indigenous peoples. You see it in the imagery, in the symbolism, in the stories, and you start to make those connections. And I think it's incredibly important that we continue to have gatherings such as this, because we're not just learning about what was done in the past, but we're also learning about what is being done now and what tribes or peoples are doing to sustain their peoples into the future and how we're going to face those challenges as we move forward as a people. or, or um, the sculptural arts or any, any of the arts for that matter are uh, just part of our normal expression of being in our environment. It's a normal part of the mnemonic language and goes hand in hand with the oral arts of um, you know, reciting ancestry, reciting connection to place, um, time and space. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to um, to have been brought up, you know, hunting and gathering. It's a normal part of um, our cultural, you know, continuum and our ability to um, maintain and continue to tell uh, stories, whether um, it's in stone or bone or wood or skin. It's, they're all related. They all come from the same um, puna or, or spring or source. Um, which is our environment. My name is Nora Naranjo Morse. I'm from Santa Clara Pueblo. Most of my days are spent in the studio and since it's close by my house I sort of like I, I have this fluid routine where I go in and out and then I'll stop and fix my roof or I'll um, do something, uh, my laundry, um, <clears throat> but there's always that opportunity to go in and create in this really fluid manner. And so um, that's really different than being in a group of a lot of people where they're exploring their creative journey and they're looking at what they're thinking and you know where they've come from and what it means to be an artist and so it's really exciting to just um, listen to other people and what they're doing because a lot of them are younger than I am and so they're exploring their journey and it's uh, wonderful and inspiring to hear what people are thinking about and um, wishing for and dreaming about. Being a part of this community is one of the greatest things. I, I, I would say it's, 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 that's the highlight of it all, is sharing again and just, there's just 
creativity just oozing every place you walk and you know just being in the studio when everyone is there people are sharing you know sharing their their cultures and you, you get little snippets of stories of family stories and it's really powerful in, in a way that we can communicate through through the generations Dolores Churchill was there and uh, she <laughs> really casually threw down encyclopedias of knowledge about weaving and dies that day. The advancement in my research, <laughs> like she saved me about 40 years of mistakes and frustration with the things that she told us there. I've been trying to um, be wide open to, uh, to collect all of that information and so I've been able to spend a lot of time with all three groups, the Hawaiian folks, Maori folks, and then the indigenous people from this landmass. And it's really exciting because foundation ideas, worldview, interrelationship between the land and the animals, the plants, you know, like all of those things are harmonious. Like it seems like everybody is understanding the same kind of approach. I was able to um, share Oregon grapefruit dye gathering and processing. I was really moved because the Hawaiian elders afterwards pulled me aside and were like, oh, you, we do the same kind of things. We have the same approach, the same conversation. That's really um, gives me a lot of peace. And to have them here and speaking about their flax and watching them spin it on their legs and they go down and come back. We do it on our legs, but we go down and then we let it go and then we come back. One goes down an S twist and comes back Z twist and they're doing the same thing. It's the same technique that we're using. And so it's really exciting to see that, that they're using it with the flax and we used it with mountain goat well. And to be able to share that was weavers is really uh, important because some of them only knew one or two endings or three but there's actually 22 that I learned and so it's really fun to share that with them to let them see these uh, very different endings. There's um, an anxiety in this work that I'm going to get it wrong or that I'll make some kind of mistake and so um, it's been a massive gift for me in my teaching practice to have this affirmation that f people who practice these things here I'm, I'm on the right path and then also in other parts of the world that we have the same kind of uh, idea and there's the similar kind of um, spiritual uh, protocol because that end of the work it's so important to get that right. We have a common feeling of respect for the earth, respect for the trees, respect for all the materials we use. How blessed we are to keep this art going. Culture is what gives you values and meaning in your life. And if you have no culture, everything's meaningless. And I feel that's what's happening today. People don't believe in anything. So it becomes meaningless. But art is what makes us human. Art is what makes us civilized. Art is what, it's like our conscience of societies. And the great artists were the ones that were ahead of everybody and had a vision. Art is important because it gives us identity, gives us meaning in our life, gives us pride. That's what makes us Quintet, that's what makes us Maori, that's what makes us Hawaiian. Culture is the glue of societies. And culture is a belief system and it's also a spiritual thing. You know, we don't 
don't talk about it, but it, it is, you know. And art is our way of showing our who we are, and it shows the quality, the, the intellect, the knowledge, wisdom of the societies of that time. And that's our challenge, is to carve and do art, great art for this time, for our people. And that's what's important. And the sharing is, helps us grow as artists. And I feel that artists that travel and work with different artists, you have more to offer in your, in your art. Because the art, it shows and it doesn't lie. As art makers, you know, we're working to, in a kind of subliminal way, to offer up kind of a spiritual conversation to the viewer. And so to be given a, a physical um, opportunity with one another to um, share in that cross-culturally um, is, a, again, a generosity that I am um, blown away by. And so I'm, I would like to say thank you for that. It's my responsibility to give back. It's my pleasure to give back. It really is a, a movement that is very much like the water that echoes out back into the ocean and it comes back in and then it goes out. That's really what I feel like when I come up here because I get so much. And then even when I go home into the desert again where there's no water, <laughs> There's that idea of this ebb and flow. And if I can help someone discover something that they hadn't thought of or come to yet, I, I find great joy in that. The importance of these gatherings is the fact that we have been um, networking for many years since we first got together in Rotorua in 1995 and it was at Mai Marae and I was the um, convener and we had a whole group of native artists coming from all over the world and it was the first time that we did that. It's really nice to have these kind of long lasting relationships, it's like a big extended family. Yeah. Some friends I haven't seen since the last gathering here 15 or 16 years ago and um, another friend haven't seen in about 18 years and so he's attending this year. The friendships that we formed from that first gathering it strengthened over the years and these are the people that are here today. When the Creator, Dukibar, declared, these are my beloved children, his tears fell upon the mountain, creating a fast. Everything was frozen. No flowers blossomed. And the fast was lifted. The alder buds sprouted, marking the lifting of the fast. And as these tears ran down the face of the mountain, they became the sacred waters that we protect today.